Watching Liquid Lunch on Newsmax TV, I'm Frank Morano here in New York, and a man who has fled us for a better weather climate and a better tax climate is John Tobacco. Uh, he is in Florida at the Newsmax Central studio. So, John, what was your issue? You, your flight was canceled? You weren't able to fly out? Yeah, um, I, I, this, I had an early flight this morning, and JetBlue, I guess, decided to cancel it. Maybe some overlap from last night or whatever from the snow in New York. Um, I was hoping to just land and get there to be with you because I miss you so dearly, Frank. But uh, it was not to be, and uh, the team over here welcomed me with open arms, said, JT, come to the headquarters. They called me to the mothership, and here I am. All right. Well, uh, we're, we're glad you are because uh, we really need your wisdom uh, around the country. We're watching this impeachment battle play out. Now, Kellyanne Conway, the president's advisor, was on uh, television over the weekend. She said that, uh, hey, if you want her to testify or anybody from the White House, maybe there's somebody else you better start with. This is what she said. Be more definitive about what we're doing. Uh, what they're doing, and they're not definitive. First, it's good in the Judiciary Committee, then it goes over to Intel, now it's back to Judiciary. Is Adam Schiff going to testify? Because he's a fact witness. That would be great. I tell you what, if Adam Schiff testifies, I'll show up on behalf of the White House. So, John, if Adam Schiff testifies, Kellyanne Conway will testify. Something tells me when the Judiciary Committee begins their hearings tomorrow, we're unlikely to hear testimony from either of them. Yeah, that's what I'm, that's what I'm thinking. Um, this is all, to me, this is all a sideshow, Frank. It's already a foregone conclusion. They're going to recommend articles of impeachment. That Gerald Nadler is going to have his job at a hut moment here where he, you know, steals the show and tries to, you know, make, make like he's doing something important. It's going to go over to the Senate and they're going to shut it down. And, you know, um, every single day now there's a drip, drip, drip. Uh, Hunter Biden was in a strip club and people were using sex toys on him. Hunter Biden was smoking crack in a strip club. Hunter Biden was smoking crack and impregnated a stripper and now he doesn't want to give up his financial records to the court. Uh, if you ask me if this was a real process, then Hunter Biden would be witness number, number one. Uh, what were you doing for this company why were they paying you 50 grand? Financial markets. Now, the president said just before from London, I don't watch the stock market. Good thing today because the stock market is down, down, down. Uh, I watch jobs. Uh, John, at what point do the stock, does the stock market and the economy go hand in hand? And at what point are they completely divorced from one another? You know, Frank, uh, I think that's a little selective on the president's behalf because when the market uh, a couple of weeks ago, broke through 28,000, closed at all time high. He was tweeting about it. So he's watching the market every day. He's cracking down on the Fed chairman to lower rates because he wants the market to go higher. Um, to me, I've said this many times on the show. If you're investing the right way, you invest for the long term, you know what you're doing. You're not investing to trade the ebbs and flows of the market. When the market's down 400, I always say namaste, stay calm, let the professionals at the New York Stock Exchange do their job, and this thing will recover right away. You're not invested for tomorrow, you're invested for your future. All right, uh, you know, you are, we're down there because of a, hotel, a, a conference put together by hotelplanner.com. Today there's some news uh, that uh, deals on flights are being offered since um, today is what they call Travel Tuesday, airlines and booking sites like Orbitz, Travelocity, Hotelplanner.com, cheap tickets, they want to boost traffic at their sites today with promises of real deals. Now, um, if you're a consumer, it does it actually make sense to take advantage of these deals today, or is it going to be the same deals that we see tomorrow or the next day? Well, let me just tell you this. As a consumer of airline tickets today, uh, there were no deals flying to New York. A one-way ticket was uh, north of $700 to get me home. Um, and being that down here in South Florida, it's off Basel Week, uh, most of the hotels were between five and $800 a night. So um, that sounds like good PR, but take it from me. I was on there looking for flights this morning. My brother Todd was helping me. I had people scouring the Internet there are no cheap flights from Florida to New York. I can tell you that. I, I can imagine. So as of now, when are you planning to come back here? I am going to depart the uh, Newsmax headquarters after this segment. 
I'm going to make my way over to Palm Beach International for a 3.30 flight. And uh, hopefully I'll be back in New York, you know, sometime this evening and uh, in the warm confines of the Liquid Lunch Studios tomorrow morning at uh, game time. All right. uh, now, uh, Edward Isaac Dovere, who is a reporter who's been around a long time, he is a staff writer for The Atlantic. He is reporting, uh, that, and I can't confirm this independently, but he is reporting just minutes ago that Kamala Harris is dropping out of the presidential race today. Uh, she is apparently informing her staff right now, Kamala Harris is out. I guess she was a little embarrassed by uh, being bested by Mike Bloomberg in the most recent poll that came out today. What do you think her exit does to the rest of the field? You know, Frank, it's funny. Um, at the uh, award ceremony last night, I was sitting next to uh, Madison Giazzotto, and we were talking about Kamala Harris. And we were talking about when she came into the race, she looked like she had so much prom pr promise. A woman of color, law enforcement background, senator, elected in a federal election, she looked like she had so much promise. She really turned herself into a caricature. And I think it's about time, rather than her just sitting up there cracking up laughing on stage, maybe we should start to call the field down to the people um, that really have a shot. And uh, I don't think Bloomberg has a shot, but it makes sense. He spent $100 million, and Kamala Harris can't raise any money anymore, so she's probably making a wise move for her party and for herself. Well, $35 million, you know. I'm sure it will be $100 million by the end of the day. So who is the Democratic contest between, in your view, right now? The, uh, I mean, you're asking me who I think the, the biggest Democratic contender is right now? Yeah, well, who? so you've kind of discounted Kamala Harris even before she was out of the race. Who do you think the race is between right now? Well, I, I think it's pretty simple. I think it's, it's Joe Biden's the front runner. Um, as you know, it's well documented. He can't remember what state he's in. He's on CNN. His eyeballs are bleeding. In the debate, his teeth almost fell out. Um, the other day, he was talking about how little so kids that's like the to rub that's, his hairy You're saying legs. he's the front runner, or that's all that works against him? He is the front runner, but right. it's scary that he's the front runner. And, uh, you know, I, I tend to think that for whatever reason, Bernie Sanders has this cult following. Um, I tend to think that Bernie is still lingering around as somebody. I think Joe's going to get knocked out of the race. I think it's going to be between Bernie and uh, Elizabeth Warren. And if that's the case, then Bloomberg could come up on the outside because he can outspend them all combined. Well, the interesting thing is Kamala Harris had qualified for this next DNC debate in December. And so by dropping out now of this debate that she's qualified for, the current stage, um, uh, at least so far, and this could change, but the current stage for the December debate is completely white because Andrew Yang, Tulsi Gabbard, and Cory Booker, none of the three of them have qualified. So it doesn't say uh, a lot about uh, diversity within the top ranks of the Democratic Party these days, does it, John? No, I mean, the midterm elections, the supposed blue wave, they were talking about, oh, look how diverse our party is. We have women, we have Muslims, we have women of color. We're the new party of diversity. And then lo and behold, you got a stage full of 70-year-old white people. Um, it, it, to me, Frank, it, it, it's terrible. And I mean, Cory Booker, um, if you ask me, he peaked when he was the mayor of Newark. And you would think he was a promising guy. He went to Yale. He was a mayor. He was a senator. Uh, he can't even make the debate stage. It's sad. To me, it's sad and that now, they can't have it, one candidate. Now, we can confirm that, indeed, Kamala Harris is dropping out of the presidential race. That is indeed confirmed. So she will Can be... Can you ring the bell on my desk, please? There you Thank go. you very much. I thought you much. only like to do that when people agreed. <laughs> well, I also do that when it's like a great event, and I think calling the field is great. Frank, I want to mention also, you know I'm down here in Florida, and there's a lot of transplanted New Yorkers and New Jerseyans down here in Florida, and uh, one family in particular, the Finley family, uh, and the Hawks, they're down here in Florida now, but uh, Mama Jerry and the fam and Renee and Christine are watching the show every single day. They got a DVR, so I want to say hello and thank you to the Finleys. And every day, the viewership is growing. Thank you. Tell a friend. All right. So now, John, you're leaving the show. You're not going to stick around and see uh, Nathaniel I Bradley? I am going to leave here now, and um, I'm going to get an Uber and I'm going to head over to Palm Beach International, and I'm going to try to get back home tonight and hopefully see my kids, get a little rest, and then come in ready to go tomorrow with you. All right. Well, wonderful, because our staff, our 
Backlot staff has constructed a suggestion box, and uh, of some lead the leadership of this, I really owe to some some people with your last name. But they've constructed a suggestion box, and this suggestion box is overflowing with suggestions for you to review upon your return. You are going to. Well, how, well how, how much time do we have left in this segment? I don't know. You want to pull one out? Uh, no, no, no. I don't want to ruin the surprise. Watch how fa watch how you. fast I veto it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I would suggest that the folks stay tuned because coming up next, Nathaniel Bradley is here. And apparently um, your data could be a gold mine for banks. Banks could actually sell your data. It's pretty scary. John, have a safe trip back. We'll see you back, keep back here tomorrow. See you tomorrow. All right. For the rest of you, stay tuned because Nathaniel Bradley is going to be here to tell you how you can either protect your data or get paid for your data. And uh, a little bit later, we're going to talk with Ethan Garr, who is going to tell you about some holiday scams that you should probably avoid. And um, you're still with that tequila, John. Good for you. And um, how you can be on the lookout for holiday cyber scams, which are very prevalent this time of year. Don't go anywhere, folks. You're watching Liquid Lunch on Newsmax TV. I'm Frank Morano.